Well, a warm welcome to this talk. It's Wednesday, the 22nd of March. Now, today I'm going to be looking at a paper, and this is the paper here I want to look at. Uh, is there a link between the 2021 COVID-19 vaccine uptake in Europe and 2022 all-cause mortality? Not COVID mortality, all-cause mortality. And this study did find such a correlation. Now, let's look at it now. This is the question. That's the paper. Now, this is studied in uh, this is paper. This paper is published in Western Norway University of Applied Sciences. Now, um, in Norway, they have certain freedoms that we don't have in Western countries. We don't have in the UK or the United States. For example, in Norway, you can actually camp anywhere. So there's certain freedoms in Norway that we don't have in other other countries. Anyway, getting back to the topic in hand, um, conflict of interest statements. The authors declare no conflict of interest. So I think we can take it from this that the authors are not being paid uh, huge amounts of money uh, by vested uh, interest, which of course is always good to check. So no vested interest there. The authors say we primarily study a possible link between 2021 COVID-19 vaccination uptake in Europe and all-cause mortality in 2022. So they're correlating vaccines in 2021 for COVID-19 and monthly mortality in 2022. Now, let's be perfectly clear. This is a preprint. This is not a peer-reviewed paper. But I wanted to cover this paper because I think the possibility of this getting published in a mainstream peer-reviewed journal is essentially zero. Leave that there. I don't think it's going to get published in a peer-reviewed journal. If it does, I'll be very surprised and will certainly report on it. But I think it's important to report on it now because this is the whole point of uh, preprints. They are papers for discussion. And we are discussing it now. Um. So, i.e. mortality higher than before the pandemic. So this is taking the mortality in 2022, comparing that to pre-pandemic levels. Now, they analysed 31 countries, January to September 2022. Uh, they did point out the importance of uh, analysing the last three months in 2022 when they get the full data available for that. This is just where that went up to. 31 EU member states throwing in Norway, Iceland, Liechtenstein and uh, Switzerland. All-cause mortality, this is a direct quote from the paper, increased more the higher the 2021 vaccine uptake. In other words, countries with more COVID-19 vaccines in 2021 had higher excess mortality in the first nine months of 2022. This is what we call a positive correlation between vaccination in 2021 and excess deaths in 2022. And they quantify it. There was a 1% point increase in uh, 2021 vaccination rate. So for every one point, every 1% that went up, basically the mortality went up by a tenth of a percent. So the mortality in 2022 was 0.105. Uh, basically 10th of a percent. So uh, I consider that number to be uh, huge. 1% increase in vaccination in 2021, 0.1% increase in overall mortality in 2022. It's a huge number, absolutely huge number. When controlling for alternative explanations, the association remained robust. So they remained robust and significant. Now, 2021, all-cause mortality was lower the higher the vaccination uptake. So, interestingly, in 2021, um, we, uh, the more vaccines people had, the less people died in 2021. But in 2022, it was the opposite. But, and it's a big but, in 2021, when they controlled for other uh, variables, uh, that became a non-significant effect. So there was an inverse correlation between COVID vaccines and all-cause mortality in 2021, but it was not significant after they accounted for um, quite a few variations that they cleverly accounted for in this paper. 
This is from data from Eurostat. We've looked at this many times. Official European statistics. Check it out for yourself. EU experienced excess mortality in the first nine months of 2022. We've looked at that before. No question that that is the case, tragically. tragically. We're talking about um, mortality here as if it's some abstract concept. Of course, it's not. It's multiple individual human tragedies and bereavements. This is why we do this. This, this, is, this, this, this is of massive importance. COVID-19 vaccination has prevented SARS-CoV-2 related hospital admissions and deaths. So there's evidence that in 2021, May 2021 and 13th of May, so these are both May 2021. And given that these papers were both published in May 2021, they're dealing with um, data from January, February, March, mostly 2021, very early on. Uh, in the pandemic, the alpha and uh, delta stages of the pandemic. So evidence that the vaccine was effective from 2021 and 2021. That's from The Lancet, that's from British Medical Journal. So um, vaccines were preventing sars coronavirus 2 related hospital, hospital admissions and deaths, specifically, of course, to sars coronavirus 2 not talking about all-cause mortality. COVID-19 vaccination has side effects such as myocarditis and pericarditis, says who don't take my word for things well as always we give evidence evidence for myocarditis and pericarditis post vaccine this one's from uh, journal of the american medical association cardiology and note we're now into 2022 so this is a year later say so, uh, th th this is six seven months later 25th of january 2022 so we can clearly see that times have changed A recent study falsified su uh, suspected association between the two diagnoses, that's myocarditis and pericarditis, and COVID-19 virus infection. So Journal of Clinical Medicine, that's that publication there. They, they found post-COVID-19 infection was not associated with either myocarditis or pericarditis. So that makes us a bit curious um, about where the increase in myocarditis and pericarditis came from if it's not caused from the natural infection. Vaccine uptake is the uh, percentage of the... No, this is how they've got the data. Vaccine update, they took as the, as the percentage of the uh, total population that's received a primary course by week 52 of 2021. In other words, this only goes up to the end of 2021. Now, here are the countries they uh, studied. And these are the percentages of the primary courses. Now, of course, all of this is in the article. I just put this here to let, show you what a huge epidemiological study this actually uh, is. So percentage of primary courses by the end of 2021. And that's what they took their correlations from. So low in Bulgaria, going all the way up to uh, Iceland and Ireland, 76.6%. <clears throat> countries that you might be interested in you can see there of course the uk no longer a member of the european union but we would be at the very much the higher end of this um and of course of course they accounted for population size needless to say their conclusion here direct quote from the paper um the interaction between vaccine uptake and time passed in months since the beginning of 2022 is strongly significant strongly significant and implies that the mortality increase and the higher the vaccine uptake. So implies that the mortality increases the higher the vaccine uptake. So the more people had vaccines in 2021. So if that was uh, vaccines in 2021. And this was uh, increasing deaths in 2022. Um, there is a positive correlation between the two. The higher the vaccination rate, the higher the deaths. The lower the vaccination rate in 2021, the lower uh, the excess deaths. Um, now, of course, 
these are correlations. So they, they, they rightly went on and looked at uh, other things that could be causing this. Um, potential reverse causality they looked at. Could it be the excess mortality that was causing the vaccinations? Well, they eliminated that because, of course, the excess mortality came after the correlations. And we know from um, you know, the, 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 need, the need for uh, temporal correlations that the cause has to come before the effect. Um, but anyway, they carried on. Concerning alternative explanations, we controlled for average all-cause mortality in 2020 and 2021 by dividing the average between 2016 and 2019. So the mortality data they were taking was from before the pandemic. So that got rid of that variable. Relatively low mortality at one period is followed by relatively high mortality and later on, uh, vice versa. So in other words, what they're saying here is, well, if lots of people died in 2020, you'd expect, or 2021, you'd actually expect fewer people to die in 2022. And the exact opposite was the case. But they did mathematically account for that. So we know that it's, it's not, that is not the cause of the excess mortality. Uh, but even when they took account of this direct quote from the paper, we still observe a significant association between 2021 vaccination uptake and 2022 monthly increase in all-cause mortality. Countries with higher vaccines in 2021 had a higher all-cause mortality in 2022. Now, they did acknowledge what's called the ecological fallacy. Uh, now, th 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 this would say that because something is true of a nation, it's not necessarily true of, uh, of uh, individuals, which, of course, is, is true. And they acknowledge that. They acknowledge that. Uh, we are cautious about making uh, individual level inferences from our nation level findings. So very honest of the researchers there. Uh, now, excess mortality um, caused by delayed medical treatment or diagnosis, um, which of course is the main reason given in the UK Parliament for the uh, excess deaths, that it's caused by uh, delays in medical treatment during the pandemic and indeed the relative chaos in the NHS at the moment. Which is true, but um, we cannot see that the issue, the issues have been more prevalent in high vaccine versus low vaccine countries. In, in other words, delay in healthcare is is all over the place. All countries have delays in healthcare, but the correlation is still there when they looked at the, um, the when when they looked at the countries when they looked at the vaccination rates. That one, when they looked at that one, uh, the correlation is still uh, is still there. So um, they don't think it's caused by that, and they actually specify this, uh, i.e., we do not expect delayed diagnosis or medical treatment during the COVID nineteen pandemic to substantially have uh, have included uh, omitted variable bias. So they don't think it's that. So there we have it. It's very clear that there's a positive correlation um, it's in that paper there the higher the uh, the higher the vaccination rates were in 2021 the higher the excess uh, mortality uh, in 2022 so that's the end of this video I've uh, nothing more to say on that now on a completely separate matter I've been um, thinking of might might go to the states and take up some uh, start playing basketball. N nothing drastic. I'd probably just start with semi pro and then build up. But uh, I've been looking at the terminology, and apparently um, you have something called a slam dunk in basketball, and this is uh, literally a goal scored in the basket by by putting the ball straight down into the loop with one's hand. So that's a slam dunk. Uh, the same points as a traditional basket, but it's a show of force, dominance, and skill. So a slam dunk is something that is uh, completely uh, convincing. As I say, nothing to do with this uh, today's talk, um, but I'll need to use the correct terminology for when I'm playing basketball in the States. So do look out for me. I'm quite optimistic about it. Uh, but for now, thank you for watching.